What's going on, YouTubers? For ladies and gentlemen, it's the natural scary thriller. And welcome everyone to Impact Wrestling Review, the show from um, October 21st, 2021. This was the go home show edition for Impact Bound for Glory 2021. Um, this could be on the Saturday, which is Bound for Glory. Oh, and Bobby, as this recording it is on the I am recording this on the Saturday. I apologize not to um, gain this up. Um, as, as I should, um, I'm not going to explain why I didn't get a chance to do that, but, um, that's, that's uh, a personal matter, but, but, um, yo, know, they're in Las Vegas, I mean, not, not yet though, uh, they were in Nashville, Tennessee, in the Skyway Studios, Josh Matthews and D'Lo Brown were your commentators, hopefully when we get to Battle Glory, we'll be getting more Josh Matthews on commentary, um, yo, know, hopefully Matt Strecker is back, not, not saying that Matt, uh, Josh Matthews is doing a bad job, uh, on commentary, because yo, I taught I tolerate I tolerate him, yo, on on these uh, yo these uh, yo, but since I'm doing these t um t part times in a way, um, on commentary, but um, but I want I want my striker back, so um, so yeah, let's let's get to uh how how this um show did where Tinson me um co you know trying to convince me to watch Bountiful Glory, um, you know whenever I get a chance to, uh. I'm not gonna talk about you know, uh, B I, um, I mean B T I meant to say, or it tends to before the impact. That to me that, is, that doesn't matter. Um, so we're gonna start off by you know Finn Juice, Juice Robinson and David Finley versus Bullet Club, Chris Bay and Hikaleo in the match. I thought it was pretty good. We had a referee bump in the match. Uh, then we got another referee coming in, and then from there, once I saw how uh, Hollywood was gonna do this, I like, I knew what was gonna be the finish. Uh, am I happy about the finish? Well, we'll get to it. So, you have uh, Juice Robinson and Hikaleo who are legal in the match. Um, of of, of how I see, uh, based on how I seen it, um, those two were legal. Um, so because you know the referee, um, Brandon uh, Tolu, uh, was was you know was in the in the ring. Uh, yes, there was no referee though. Um, that, you know the referee was the official referee. Uh, Brandon Tolu uh, came in because you know the other referee went, went down because of a referee bump that happened. So that referee had no clue what was going on, but Brandon Tolu was the one who's all uh, you know uh, who has uh, been the you know the second referee in the match. Goes for the pin for uh, Drew Robinson pinning Hikaleo, and the other referee you know going for the pin where it tends to um, Chris Bay pinning David Finley, which they were not legal. So basically, this is all what they did here to protect both guys because uh, in this match. The winner of this match will get to face the Good Brothers at Bountiful Glory for the Impact Protecting Titles. Now, the way they did this too, and all like, like I mean, like I said, that was a good match and all that. The booking of it, uh, you know, the official of it made no sense because, yo, know, Finn Juice should have won, basically. Finn Juice got the um really should have got the win there because Juice Robinson was legal, Hikaleo was legal, uh, was legal. I meant to say, L legal, um. So the way they did this uh, whole thing was uh, didn't make no sense at all to me. So you had referees uh, arguing about who won, you know. Brandon uh, said the you know Finn just won, but yeah, the referee who's who's the official referee of the match, um, you know the real the real official referee of the match saying that Chris uh you know Chris Bay uh, of Blue Club with Hikaleo won the match, and then you go backstage and they start having this whole controversy of who who won, who's going on the Bound Glory. So Scott Demore comes in. And basically steps in, overthinks it, which I'll mention right now. Uh, the, uh, he made a decision to have both teams in there, and it seems of like I knew it. But hey, um, it's either either, either doesn't make any sense because you know, uh, Finjus really did win because they were you know, I, as, as I already explained it, you know, Juice Robinson and he clay was legal in the match, so um, it's whatever, you know. I guess they want to um, have Chris Bay and Hikaleo do something on um, Bound from Glory, so. And plus, they'll get, they'll get a good pay payment for that, too, so. Um, so, yes, um, as it stands, it's going to be Finn Juice versus Bullet Club versus to, um, Chris Bay and Hikaleo versus the Good Brothers, or, in this case, the Good For Nothing Brothers. And hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll get to my pre preview, uh, too, as well, because um, uh, that's something to talk about tends to um, you know, Bound from Glory later on, uh, but not, not, not uh, in my preview, though, uh, but well, I'll talk about a little in the preview, but um, but it tends to um, you know, uh, what I want to talk about it tends to, you know, 
Bafagori uh, itself. I'll get, I'll get to, I'll get to when I get to it. And then we get to, you know, they basically uh, D'Lo Brown and Josh Matthews were talking about some stuff that's kind of on Bafagori on Saturday. Um, where it tends to, you know, the count, you know, it's basically they're going to do a, a countdown, a pre-show, and, you know, and, you know, the show itself, Bound for Glory. And there you go. Also, we get to a video package highlighting cur the career of Charles Alexander, of his, you know, not just, uh, not just of his wrestling career, but uh, of, about his, um, you know, his real life, um, you know, uh, also his um, his real life persona as well, and I thought the way they did this, it was pitch perfect. It was great. Uh, I mean, I I never knew about his stories over since was um you know having a broken neck and all that, and you know um how, uh, and and um, you know he um you know over since him being in the wrestling business and you know again with that broken neck and then he had to retire early because of that. Uh, he, had, he had two neck injuries um which was uh, it was unfortunate. They uh so the second one, um he had to retire and all, uh but then he came back, you know more stronger than ne never because before he wasn't uh in, in in the best shape when he got himself in great shape which you actually see as you see right now uh, of Charles Alexander, now all of a sudden he looks great and he's um he never looked back at it and he's uh, looking he's been um he's been looking great ever since and he's he's still living the dream of being a pro wrestler, um he talks about him uh, himself growing up with uh you know, um. I think he said something about his um his parents divorcing. I I'm assuming that's the story. That's what it was. Uh, his his um uh, his parents divorced. You know, as you know, at a young, at a young age. Um. And he couldn't afford anything. You know, to uh to be to be a part of uh like a uh some kind of um team, um for um you know in high school or whatever, something like that. And he was a chubby kid by the way. Uh, so yeah, growing up was was rough for him. Uh, as a Canadian uh, as a Canadian kid uh you know uh kid. Uh, that he that he is um so yeah there were some things I didn't know about Charles Alexander um and that was one of them um or it tends to um uh, his personal life um and now he's soaring and all that and you know they're highlight uh, his, uh, his other career in pro wrestling as well not just in Impact Wrestling but um also in uh I think it was you know uh, the, the show called Divine uh I, I'm assuming it's called Divine uh rest I can't remember if, if that was um I, I mean I I mean I heard. Uh, of some you know, which, which is, um, you know, in this Canadian promotion, all that. Scott Demoy uh all of a sudden gives him the contract. Uh, I guess he wasn't affiliate, officially somewhere in Pack Wrestling until you know until maybe as a, as a, uh, recently this year, and then and they talk about um his his very um division in T uh at the time at the time TNA is the X is the X division and, and which is why he uh became X champion during this year and he did a great job with that and talks about you know. How the expression of uh, is is like is like the cruiserweight division, which is true. It's exactly similar to um to uh, how how it was um based on. But it tends to um, you know, I watched WWE because of the cruiserweights. I watched TNA because of the X division. Exactly uh how how it is you know where it tends to the similarities. <laughs> so yes, this was a great story uh with it uh, told about um Josh Alexander, which is going to lead to him um you know missing option C to challenge Christian Cage for the Impact World Title at Bound for Glory. And we'll get to more of of, of, of Josh Alexander later on, versus the Christian Cage, because that ends up being the main event. Uh, to, well, the, the, the final segment to end the show, I should say. Also, we get to a six-person tag team match. I mean, not six-person. Uh, uh, a three-way tag team match, I should say. Yeah, Jordan Grace teaming up with Fallout Ba. You have Team Dashwood teaming up with John Skyler on um, being accompanied by Caleb. Excuse me. <clears throat> then you have uh, Chelsea Green. Um. Teaming up with Crazy Steve, and this is all about you know building up the the, the pre-show match for Battle for for the uh, Impact uh, Digital Media Championship. A belt that I really don't care for. I mean, it's a great it's, it look, the belt looks great though, but um, was on it look like a knockoff, a ripoff, a dollar store version of AEW's World Championship title belt. If you've seen the belt, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, but yeah, uh, this is all you know pertains to um. You know, building up that that whole um you know, you know title title belt you know, and the match with you um I really I really don't I didn't really care about the match that much but I still watched it and like all right it was it was it was alright it was alright alright match yeah I, I and I was entertained what was what was in the match too Nine, minus Tino Dashwood and and, and Tino Dashwood and John uh Skyler won the match so there you go uh and it's not gonna be um 
it's not gonna be um teams uh, once they get when we get to it. It's gonna be um basically um they all gonna go against each other. Uh, all six all six of them. And to my point, yeah, well oh, actually I'll talk more about that when I do the, the preview. So I'll let you know how I think she won the on the belt on, on the preview show. Yeah, you know, I mean yeah, on the preview uh, video I meant to say. Preview show. <laughs> uh well in a way it is kinda of preview show, so uh but yeah, but there you go. Um also let me get to Rhino, who makes who's gonna make his decision. Yo, because he's coming out, he's not talking, he's all silent and all that. And also Heath comes out and, and basically um yo. Yo, he's trying to uh you know talk to uh sensor to Rhino and all that, right? Also every young comes out and he's trying to talk to some sensor to him as well. Basically, uh whose side is Rhino's gonna be on? Is it gonna be on Heath's side or is it gonna be on Vine by Design side. Now we didn't get no answer on here because when he got attacked by the Vine by Design, because you know, at this point, um, you know, Vine by Design had enough, <laughs> and you know he was trying to respond by, respond back and everything, right? Um, but you know, numbers game, Rhino didn't do anything uh, except you know pulling um Dino off of Heath, and then all of a sudden Rhino was looking like he's going to Gore, look like he's going to either Gore, um, you know, Heath, you know, in the, in the position that he was in. And, and Eric Garland is like, you know, loving this. And also, Rhino just leaves and goes into the, in the crowd. And then he comes back. And then he gets um, fed by the wolves of Fine by Design. Eric you know, takes, care, takes care of some, and that was it. So we're going to see how so we're gonna see how it's going to um, come um, to its full uh, influence uh, on Bound for Glory. Which um, um, I, I can tell you right now, um, Rhino is going to uh, be on the side of Thief. There's no way he's going to, um, you know, do all, they're going to have Rhino do all this. Just for him to make up his mind to be uh, on the side with Brown by Design again to go over uh, to, uh, to turn on his um, his best friend, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, more of the real package of coming soon to Impact Wrestling, the key to pro wrestling, Minoru Suzuki, and I love the preview package that they did by the way. You know, I would love to see him be part of Bound for Glory. You know, why wait? Why wait till next week or or whenever they want not to debut him. Bring him, in, bring him in, um on Battle Glory, you know. Be, have him be part of the um you know, of the Cody Shot Gauntlet match. Not saying he has to win, but then be part of it, you know. All right, now we get to Mickey James, um Poison. Where it tends to Dion Prazo's picking your you know to pick your Poison to Mickey James, for uh it tends to picking Savannah Evans with Tasha Steele at ringside. So Mickey James versus Savannah Evans. Match itself was pretty was pretty good. You have uh Savannah Evans being dominant in the match, you know, as I expected. Mickey James, you know, gained some offense, but um but not not to show um any any lights of her on getting any um you know comeback. But yeah, you know, but she uh sh she showed a lot of good comeback still. And then John Prosser comes out for a distraction. And then um as I as I knew it was gonna happen here, um, you know, I had a better idea of how to protect you know, you know, Savannah Evans to win here. I mean to to lose. Have her lose by DQ. Yeah, Tasha Steel's out there. Have her on um, come in there and start the, the, the you know the cover that Mickey James was gonna go on to um Savannah Evans, you know that way you can still protect her or uh, you know and you could do you could still keep her undefeated where she couldn't you know she can't lose to anyone you know by pinfall or submission. Or uh, or you know with Dion Prosper coming out there and you know um you know basically attacking um you know Savannah Evans you know because you know the whole thing you know she she can't touch uh Mickey James you know because the whole um no no the um uh don't touch. Me clause, I, I no, I mean, yeah, no contact clause. I meant to say, <laughs> yo, because if she does that, then she lose her her title. Uh, same with Mickey James. If she if she loses, then she loses her opportunity for the title. <laughs> so, you know, she could attack uh Savannah Evans. You know, Savannah Evans could have won there. You know, by DQ. You know, Mickey James all uh, gets upset, but you know she can't touch her. You know, and but that's that's a steal still. She get in there and you know and lay her hands on uh you know. Dion Prazo and then Mickey James probably um save Dion Prazo and all that you know to save save her from you know to keep her one hundred percent in the way you know you know and then Matthew Rayro comes out and then and then he could he could attack Mickey James which we'll get to more of Matthew Rayro when, when we get to that part but uh yo but yo just just coming my ideas that I, I just could came up you know with and all that instead what they did here is what I thought they was gonna do they basically Savannah was Savannah Evans they Nia Jax her. And some of you know what I, what I mean by that. If you listen to my uh, my thoughts about you know when Nia Jax of how they double E's been poking her, you know retains to um how to how to protect her. 
pertains to uh, on the asylum, or maybe if I if I mentioned it at one point on for the four shooters, and and I, and I know I mentioned a lot here before, where it tends to me um, doing raw reviews in the past before, and and other reviews where it tends to WWE. They always gotta protect the big um, you know, monsters by taking the ring post. and that's exactly what they did with um, you know, with Savannah Evans. She made a mistake. She ran into the ring post, showed her first, and like there it goes. That's that's how they can protect her. So Mickey James, you know, had her, um, you know, you know, basically um, stepped away. And by the way, um, Savannah Evans did her uh, finish her, but Mickey just kicked out. But in the split second, she kicked out. So in the way she, um, uh, I I, I didn't appreciate you know, they they did that uh, with uh, Savannah Evans, but at the same time, you know, Mickey James is a veteran. She's a legend. Um, and you know. She's uh, an, a strong, independent woman, you know, and a, a mother in another way. And, um, I'm basically I come up with some some excuse in a way, but uh, but at the same time, yeah, I did not appreciate you know her kicking out a first finisher. Um, good, good, they stepped that as a finisher, and and already already they um, have have kicked out of, of a finisher. Yeah, you know, yeah, they had Mickey James kicked out of Savannah Evans' finisher, but yeah, but like I said, Savannah Evans uh, ran to the ring post, and then Mickey James took advantage of it. She went for uh, like a a, a kick. Around kick or, or one of those um spin hook kick where she's close at long kiss good night. Um and then she goes for her DT. Um or Mickey T, something like that, whatever I want to say. And and she got the win. And then John Prosser comes out, and then you know, she um and Mickey James are face to face. John Prosso touches her like this, like, wait a minute, she touched her. Like What the fuck was that? Like you ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> that you know, this it's supposed to be a non contact clause. She touched her. But we'll get to more of that when we get to Scott Tamoy. So, Matthew Rayro was out there. He was behind Mickey James, and Mickey James gets punched out by Matthew Rayro. Basically, it was an ambush. You all know that. And by the way, uh, Deion Prosser looked, looked, looked fine in that dress, by the way. In that red dress. Mm -mm. So, yeah. And then she touched, and she kept touching on Mickey James, by the way. Not just undoing this, but also touching her by her hair and all that. Like, like you signed the contract... To not touch Mickey James. The, yeah, and, her, and we'll get to her excuse of why uh, uh, why she thought this was okay. So here we go. Scott Demore approaches them. Yo. Yo. I think she was being interviewed at first by GM Miller. Yo. Yo, Matthew Rayro and, and Gian Prosso. It was more an uh, interview for Gian, uh, Gian Prosso. Um, but yeah, Gian Prosso said, I, I didn't leave my hand. Or, I, I didn't beat her up or anything. I didn't um, attack her. And I said to myself, that doesn't matter. You still touched her. So Scott Demoy comes in and yeah, she's tossing the to uh, Scott Demoy. Like I did not beat her up. I did not yo know, had to lay, uh, lay my um you know, hands on her, but someone else did. Had to for me in the way. Scott Demoy said, "But um yeah yeah that's true yeah 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 I know but but the, on the fact that is you you signed a contract you know to not touch her anyway, and that's exactly what he did. He touched Mickey James. Deion Brazo touched Mickey James. Doesn't matter if she if she hit him hit her or not." She still lay her hands on Mickey James. No contact clause means uh, you can't you can't touch, you can't hit. That that's that's basically what it is. So Matthew, um, I mean not Matthew Matthew Rebel, um, it's got the Moy, I should say. What's going to strip the belt from her from her and all that? But I said, you know what? I'm not even going to do that because if you know, if your belt's going to be taken away. It's gonna be taken away by Mickey James. Basically, he's praising Mickey James to take the belt away from Dion Perazzo. <laughs> and Matthew Rayro is banned from ringside. And that was it. And they and they got upset and all that. And there you go. Uh the learning tree. Brian Myers is so disappointed of the learning tree. And decided to, to, to cut, you know, the learning tree. Which tends to many lemons and Sam Beal. So though both teams are out. Ziggy Dice and VSK are still in. So there you go. Not much to say about that. So basically, on uh, this whole build up of this whole learning tree is right, um, you know, it's right dead in the water before it, it even got uh, left the ground. Uh, Scott Demore joins um with Decay, who uh, who appear uh, you know out of nowhere, teleporting, where it tends to uh the inspirations not being there by the way, but the representative was just was there. Um, his name here is Barrister R D. I basically he was the same guy who uh, represented for Dion Pross at one point. Um but I don't remember uh uh where it tends to Lena for Sam anniversary. Can't remember uh if that was the case or not at the time. 
Well, I digress. Um, but yeah, but he was there for uh, for the inspiration of Cassie Lee and Jesse K. Um, and then you know the K uh, comes out of nowhere, and basically it was a, a, a contract signing. That's what it was for to make it official for the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Titles. Even though the inspiration hasn't earned a higher match yet, but it's what uh, I, you know. But I guess you know because they're gonna be showing up at Impact Wrestling's um, Bound for Glory. That means uh, yeah, the only teams left now to face um, uh, in the Impact you know, roster. So, Trey Miguel versus Alex Zane. And the match I thought was pretty good. Back and forth between the two. Which is to show off uh, what they can do. And Trey Miguel won. After the match, Steve Macklin comes in and attacks Trey Miguel. And then gives him the uh, mayhem for Raw. And then we get um, El Fantasmo coming out to attack Steve Macklin. And then Steve Macklin is beating up on El Fantasmo. Also, we get Bullet Club coming out. You know, basically, uh, the even the odds takes takes out Steve Macklin with the sudden death super kick, and and then returns to uh Jim Miguel. He's gonna get the sudden death super kick too. But then, uh, uh, El Fantasma stops himself and then he goes low. Yo, know, goes low, and boom, right to the balls. I right, as soon as I see, as soon as I saw him went down, like I said, I know I know he's gonna do. And that's like, and and that and I was right. What he was, what he just, just did, there, what he just did there. So there you go. And now we get to the final segment, which because on that match, I was uh, Trey Miguel and Alex Zane was the main event. It was Josh Alexander. He overtakes to Christian Cage, uh, at Bound for Glory. He comes out. He talks about how the risk, uh. Comes uh, at a high reward. Says that he wants to hold the prestige. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean the pinnacle title, I should say. He uh, he he dedicates uh, this uh, upcoming match to his children. Although he has a convi- a conv- um, a, conv- a convincing uh, speech, I should say, over uh, since the Impact World Champion Christian Cage. Um, and all of a sudden, Christian Cage comes out, and Christian Cage um, says to Charles Alexander. That last week at the summit, he thinks that Josh Alexander won't be able to handle the other uh, pressure on um, that, you know, you know before, um, that's before him in, in a way. And Josh Alexander strongly disagrees and basically says that, you know, looks at uh, at the forbidden door uh, in Christian Cage's face to, you know, to slam it and, and, and to bring it home to where the belt belongs or which, because Christian Cage is not an impact wrestling guy. He's an AEW guy. So basically, uh, when you look at it, is Christian Cage and the AW guy holding um yo know, his yo know, yo know, the um the Impact World Belt you know from Impact Wrestling I guess a guy who is um uh, you know uh an Impact Wrestling guy and Josh Alexander and I love how this promo stupid was done by the way with uh, with um you know back and forth between Christian, um you know Josh Alexander and Christian Cage from Josh Alexander's part because the crowd was chanting uh bring bring it home or something like that. Uh, you know, but tends to bring back the belt, you know, back home to Impact Wrestling. And Josh Alexander is like, yeah, exactly. You know, he's gonna um stand the um the forbidden door in the face of Christian Cage and brings the belt back home to where it belongs. <laughs> and then Christian Cage uh makes some uh, smart remarks, uh to make uh Josh Alexander snap. And then Josh Alexander uh lays him out. They start fighting. We get Shakur coming out to break them up, but on um, to no avail. Also, we get the Russells coming out. A couple, not not all of them, but you know, a few Russells came out to uh, to pull apart Christian Cage, and I thought that was well done. And that's the show end. Christian Cage leaves the ring, and then shows up, shows the belt up in the air, and that was it. Wow, what a gong show this was, folks! I I enjoyed this gong show edition. Now they um you know you know you know covered the the entire basis of the gong show of of it. I mean, they did mention the you know the Cold Shot Gauntlet match, um, but they didn't show any um you know any teasers. Of it whatsoever of who's gonna be, who's gonna be in it because yo they want us to be surprised who's gonna be in it. But I'll get to more of that. I get to the, to the preview of it. But but there you go, folks. I, I, but I thought this was a, a, a strong on um, home show where it tends to bound for glory. Um, that impact wrestling did here on this show. It really, it really, um, it really, um, maybe maybe um. I mean, I was gonna I was gonna watch it either way. You know, obviously, yeah, you know me. I always watch always watch the show. This is one of the biggest shows of the year, but. To me, uh, what comes close to the um, biggest show of the year is Summer Anniversary. But when it tends to um, their WrestleMania, this is their WrestleMania. And I did, they did a great job here on this show. You know, to build up, to build up um, you know, uh, what, uh, what, what could be meaningful 
uh, for the biggest shows uh, that's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's another big thing, too. It's, it's, it's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. So, um, so I can't wait to see how it turns out. So, yeah, there you go, folks. And that'll do it for this um, Impact Wrestling show, the Gorm Show edition for Battle Gurry, uh, from October 21st, 2021. Tomorrow Wrestling were five matches on the show here. Um, and I'm surprised they had more, um, you know, more, more than uh, more than four matches here, or at least more than three matches, because you know, we're tends to um, the show itself. There was not a lot of wrestling, but they they feel enough wrestling in there where um, they they had a lot, of t- a lot of time to do it, which is why I'm pretty sure that's uh, that, that's why they um, you know, you know, do any teasers or who's gonna be in in, in the gauntlet of the quarter shot thing, which you know, and I got a hunch who's gonna be in it too, even though I heard, I I have heard about some things, but I'll talk more about that one when I do the preview, um, but. But what tends to Battle Gurry is over. That's one thing I want to talk about too. What tends to Battle Gurry, uh, it's going to be on a special time at 10 p.m. Not because of AW, by the way, because we had there's no way we could have known that AW is going to be doing their shows on a Saturday. What tends to Dynamite because of the hockey game that, that changed the law. So, because they, they you know, what tends to Battle Gurry make the decision of, uh, for, um, Battle Gurry to be on on the, on 10 p.m. for my time zone, on 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 this date, um. This was um this was talked about for about maybe months, maybe back in um back probably back in August, or maybe somewhere, somewhere from middle of August, and then and then we got to September, you know. But we 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 knew this beforehand that it was gonna be well for those who watch the show and for those who pay attention to to um to the to the um to the product of Impact Wrestling. We all knew it was gonna be. We all don't. We all knew it was gonna be. It was enough case by the way. Uh, we all knew it was gonna be on 10 p.m., which I thought was weird. It's kind of strange that um, they're doing it on 10 p.m. Uh, and again, if, if everyone's saying that it, it's because of AW, don't no, don't even go there. It has nothing, it has nothing to do with AW because AW had no idea that it, you know that, that was that the time was going to be changed uh, when it comes to the hockey game because you know it happens. You know the H, you know, you know the NHL, um, you know, um, ends up being on Wednesdays. Uh, you know, under a bad time, it were tends to um, you know, for uh, AW doing this uh, this thing right now. So, um. Yeah, it's the same thing I feel about what's just in, um, in the NBA as well. So, but there you go. But yeah, I've told my wrestling for five matches. My overall strength for the show, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10. I, I enjoyed the show for what it was. Very good show. So, that being said, thank you all for watching. For It's the Natural Scary Thriller saying, Peace on the streets for you to be well. Stay safe. Take care of yourself. Everything that's going in the world. Wear your mask. Get your hands sanitized. Wear your gloves. Get vaccinated. And make sure to to be better, be respectful, be appreciative, and to love one another. God bless one another. We can peace and harmony for us all. But I am out here. Ta-ta for now. You all take care.